some troubled times. People are picking sides against one another. Within borders that used to define us singularly. Information of all kinds is accessible and digested to fit our self-image, pain, and fan the outrage that others are to blame. When I sit quiet with myself to move beyond my own troubled reactions, one word comes to mind. Love. Not the tangled, romantic, relationship kind of love, because if it was that kind of love, I wouldn't be up here tonight as any kind of authority. It's the kind of love that we all know exists, despite the kind of situations we create for ourselves. It's a state of being that transcends reaction and, the, and our fearful nature. And when accessed, can be known, and is known, to be many, many times more powerful than our fear-based reactive self. The problem is simple mathematics. Because for every one person that steps across the threshold into understanding and living a life from love, There's many more that don't. And despite the fact that that power of that one person maybe equals 10,000 or 100,000 other people that remain in their fear-based realities, only one in a million actually get there. Why? Why do these mathematics stack up in this fashion? Or seem to have over the course of time? We have Gandhi, we have Martin Luther King, we have Jesus, we have Buddha, and we probably have somebody sitting in this room. Who comes from that place? The why of it is our instinct holds on to the possibility of reaching for fear in order to say stay, excuse me, stay safe. It is our highest calling to stay safe. It is our most imperative, re instinctive reaction. Consider this. You're a hunter-gatherer scratching around the woods. You haven't eaten for days and days and days. You come to a clearing, a savanna. You are hungry. You are maybe days away from death. You are so emaciated. In that clearing is a tree full of ripe fruit. It is your salvation. You will now survive to eat and live and move forward for another day. What a relief. You step out into the clearing and see a predator, a lion, a tiger. What do you do? You stop. Because in the moment, the imperative to stay safe and keep the being alive overrides everything else, at least momentarily. Maybe you recede back into the woods and climb a tree and survey the situation and take in some more factual data. If you look out from that treetop perch and see that that lion has been gorging itself on a gazelle all day and is sitting there fat and happy and bloated, probably feel a little bit more confident about tiptoeing out into the meadow and climbing the tree and eating your fill. Otherwise, you might be more cautious. At some point, you might risk it, death, to go eat, or turn back and look for another situation. The problem at hand today is the media bubbles that we live in do not allow us to climb the tree and get factual data. We are constantly bombarded with that information that feeds our self-image and feeds our fears and fans those flames of outrage. 
And if you think it's only the other side that does it, open your Facebook page and take a look at what the hell is on there. You are immersed in it. The opportunity is ours. My ask tonight from everybody in this room is to keep fighting for love. Make your fight active, not passive. And move toward the notion that we can overcome that which separates us.